All right, my name is Chuck Zito. Um, basically, I got started into the uh, the fighting. Was my my dad was a uh, professional boxer in the 30s and the 40s. And I remember him getting on his knees and uh, teaching me how to box. Then, when I was 12 years old, I had my first uh, ring fight at the uh, Southside Boys Club in uh, New Rochelle, New York. And then from there, of course, I went into the Golden Gloves. I was in the Golden Gloves four times. And I remember it was my father's birthday, uh, January 30th, 1973. I had my first uh, fight in the Golden Gloves. It was the first night of the Golden Gloves, and I had the first fight. So talk about pressure, man. A lot of pressure on me. But uh, I wound up knocking a guy out in the second round. So I won that fight. Wow. Do you, was the other guy younger too, or was yeah the other guy was a big, big uh, beefed up, strong kid, and uh, I remember we, we <laughs> the first round the bell rang, came out, and he came out. He had a little little like a, a, a almost like a a, a Bojack style rushing kind of fighter, and he hit me with an overhand right, and he hit me right on top of the temple. I just backed up, and I said at, at that moment I says, "What the fuck am I doing here?" And then, of course, I hit him. I, uh, I, I threw a jab, and he went down underneath it. I knew. I threw another jab. I said, the third jab. I threw the jab. I just stuck it out there. I hit him up a cut. Boom, he went down at the end of the first round. So I got all my confidence back. Then the second round, I knocked him out. Was your dad in your corner? Yeah, my dad was in my corner. He was uh, also my, uh, my, my trainer and my cut man, in case I got cut. And I remember for the first round, he goes, don't worry about it. Everything is good. He's not laying a glove on you. I says, then somebody better watch the fucking referee because somebody's kicking my ass out there. <laughs> so. so after your first fight, what, was there a rush that just said, oh, I got to keep doing this? Or, Well, what I did was I, 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 I was an amateur fighter and uh, uh, I never turned pro because I became a husband and father at 17. So it was kind of hard to... Uh, keep fighting and uh, working at the same time. But I had a good, good amateur record and I fought in, in the uh, gloves four times and I went on the amateur circuit. And uh, of course I was working. So they went my uh, professional career. I think I could have been a good fighter. Uh, okay, so you, so you had the fighting and then all of a sudden did something else happened in your life and inspired you to go another well, direction after yeah, that? Yeah, after, as I was still fighting, I mean, I was only 12 years old when I had my first ring fight. And uh, then when I was uh, 13 years old, I remember going uh, 1967, I went in and saw Hell's Angels on Wheels, starring uh, Sonny Barger and Jack Nicholson. And basically Sonny Barger inspired me to ride a motorcycle. I went home, I made a mini bike, found an old Schwinn bicycle, I found a lawnmower on somebody's lawn there, you know, and I wound up making a uh, mini bike. So you just borrowed the lawnmower? <laughs> the bus, I borrowed, yeah. I borrowed these things and made a mini bike. I won't say where we got them from. But uh, it was all of a sudden my neighbor was missing his lawnmower and somebody else was missing a Schwinn bicycle. <laughs> so uh, I made a mini bike. And then I went to the local Army Navy store, Jack's Army Navy store. I paid $6 for a dungaree jacket. And I cut the sleeves off. And I wrote the opposite of Hell's Angels. I hand painted on the back of the jacket, the opposite of Hell's Angels, Heaven's Devils. Wow. And I rode around town on my new mini bike with my new patch on. <laughs> Did you recruit anybody into that? Yeah, there was a couple of us. Uh, uh, we had a mini bikes, a little mini bike crew. And uh, then one day riding around my neighborhood, <clears throat> I passed this uh, apartment building and saw this big chopper sitting in the middle of the uh, parking lot. And I pulled up next to it, and it was just, I remember, it was just had long up sweeps, and, and it was just gleaming, man. It was a uh, you know, rigid frame, and, and uh, eight pangas, and it was just wild. Something like I saw back in uh, Hell's Angels on Wheels. And all of a sudden, I saw some guys say, hey, what are you doing by the bike? And I looked up, there was this guy, he was like 6'4". And uh, he had a patch on with all metals and everything on it. And I saw, oh, shit, there's a Hell's Angel living in my neighborhood. Well, what it turned out was he was in a club called the, uh, the Aliens, the Bronx Aliens, which was a big club back in the day, in the 60s and 70s in New York. And uh, they had aliens from all over the place. Uh, of course, the alien nomads who basically became Hell's Angels uh, December 5th, 1969. 
they had Jersey Aliens, Bronx Aliens, Brooklyn Aliens, Staten Island Aliens, and there was a big club back in the day. And this guy was a, a club member. So even though he's older than me, like 17, I was, I was 13 at the time. He was 17, 18. And uh, we became friends. So I used to watch him build his bikes and paint. And, and uh, I learned from him how to build motorcycles and, and how to paint and everything. And uh, we became friends and we're still friends to this day, 48 years later. Wow. So uh, he uh, also taught me the ropes. And then when I was fighting, I met uh, uh, the president of the uh, Hells Angels back then, was Sandy Alexander, the New York City Hells Angels. And he was a professional boxer and we used to box in the same gym, a Gramercy gym on 14th Street. And we used to spar each other, we became friends. I started going down to the clubhouse on 3rd Street. I wound up painting Sandy's motorcycle. Other Hells Angels saw me paint and uh, I started painting their bikes. And next thing you know, I became a Hells Angel. Right. Which was uh, something for me to meet Sandy because these are the people that inspired me to ride a motorcycle, Hells Angels, and Sonny Barga. Do you, so, do you uh, remember your first time meeting Sonny? I remember it was, uh, Sonny was in like 1979 when I first got my patch and uh, he came to New York City and I also met him at the uh, USA 9 uh, uh, run. It was his first run because he was in jail all the time and it was my first run. So we had something in common. It was his first USA run and so was mine. And we met and uh, here it is, you know, it's almost 40 years later and uh, I'm in this house doing an interview with you. So. <laughs> yeah, and we had a good time outside. It was so, so peaceful. Oh, this is beautiful here, yeah. man. I can't believe it. You know, he uh, actually, Sonny went to jail out here in Arizona, and he said he's going to come back here. And uh, he left Oakland to come to uh, Arizona. And it's beautiful here. I can see why. But uh, went to his, of course, went to the opening last night of uh, Dead and Five Heartbeats. So it was great to uh, see Sonny and... Uh, Ride with him again after all these years. So tell me a little bit about uh, in Dead and Five Heartbeats. What was what were your feelings? Well, the, uh, basically, uh, uh, we'll go back. We'll take that back a little bit because uh, when I was sitting in that dark and movie theater watching Sonny Barger and Jack Nicholson and, and the Oakland Hells Angels, I was uh, um, I remember a scene that Sonny was leading the pack on a Bay Bridge with hundreds of Hells Angels, and it was just stuck in my mind. And I remember back in 1982, we all rode to Sturgis, South Dakota. It was our first time there. And hundreds of Hells Angels pulled in. And I was, remember uh, Sonny and Sandy was leading the pack. And it was like deja vu all over again, me being in that pack on the Bay Bridge. That's what it felt like. And Sonny was leading the pack, and it was a, a proud day in my life. So, uh, of course, I was a Hells Angel for 25 years, and... Uh, I wound up quitting the club, and it's nine years already, and here it is, uh, you know, just being uh, with Sonny again, it's great. And seeing his movie last night was great, So, uh, which was uh, the book he wrote. And, and building bikes, too. Uh, yes, that's what I do. I build bikes. Uh, 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 that's what I was doing. I was so close. I was in L.A. building another motorcycle, and... Um, we were in touch, and I decided to come here and uh, spend the weekend with Sonny and be a part of his, uh, be part of the legend, uh, the history making again. What's the the story on the Sons of Anarchy bike that you built? Oh well, I built that bike. Uh, basically, I was in the Sons of Anarchy. I was in the fifth season of the Sons of Anarchy uh, after a big uh, um, court battle with them. So I was suing them for two years, and the, the ironic thing about it, I wound up working on the show. <laughs> so it, it, it was pretty wild, man. Um, uh, I remember uh, when I met uh, Kurt Sutter for the, for the, well, it was the second time I saw him in the depositions. And the second time I went to meet him was in a restaurant in Beverly Hills, and he's friends with Charlie Sheen. And Charlie, he gave Charlie Sheen a Sons of Anarchy jacket. So after my, I dropped the lawsuit, I met him, and I wound up going to the meeting with the uh, Sons of Anarchy jacket on that Charlie gave me. So he was saying, well, this could be bad, or this could be good. <laughs> so he didn't know how to take it. 
but it was all good. After meeting him, I said, you know what, I, I, I wound up liking a guy, and uh, he asked me if I wanted to be on the show. So I dropped the, uh, buried the hatchet and, and uh, dropped the lawsuit, and I wound up working on the fifth season of The Sons of Anarchy. And I told him right there, I said, I guarantee you, it's the fifth season. You guys are going in the fifth season. I guarantee you it's going to be the highest rated show you ever had. Not was it the only highest rated show in Sons of Anarchy, it was the highest rated show in the history of FX. <laughs> and you've got some other uh, just absolutely amazing movies that you've been in. What tell us? Uh, so many things. Uh, of course, I uh, how I became basically we'll go back and uh, Hell's Angels opened the doors for me in Hollywood. Sandy Alexander was a stuntman in the movie business, and in uh, 1979 they did a movie called Dead Ringer with Sharon Meatloaf, and he used 18 Hell's Angels for the scene. And I was one of them, and I caught the stunt, stunt bug, so I became a stunt man. So it's thanks to the Hells Angels and Sandy Alexander that that's what got me in the business. And I became a stunt man, and stunt doubled some of the biggest actors you could think of. And uh, then, of course, I got my first TV series was uh, on the HBO series Oz, which was the best show they ever made. And uh, I used to tell the Sopranos, I said, if the Sopranos ever came to Oz, we'd spank you guys. <laughs> so, had a great time on that. And of course, I did a bunch of other movies, and uh, I was in over 100 movies as a stuntman. So you never saw me in a movie, you only saw my name at the end of the credits. We made the other actors look good. <laughs> so, of course, uh, then I got the Sons of Anarchy, which is, this is my look for the Sons of Anarchy. And... Uh, which I took from uh, years ago from Cisco Valderrama. He had the Fu Manchu, you know? So uh, he inspired me for my look for Sons of Anarchy. You've also had an opportunity to be one of the, the, the biggest stunt, or not stuntmen, but bodyguards in the industry. And yes. Tell us about some of the people. That you <clears throat> well, what happened was back then, after I became Hell's Angel, I became a stuntman. In 1980, I started my own bodyguard service called, uh, since my name was Charlie and Chuck, and I was a Hell's Angel, I called it Charlie's Angels Bodyguard Service. And Liza Minnelli was my first client. Wow. And when people saw me with Liza, it was just, I never even advertised, it was just word of mouth. So from Liza, I went to Sylvester Stallone and Mickey Rourke and Sean Penn and Charlie Sheen and Angelina Jolie and Pamela Anderson and Cher and... The list goes on and on. I bodyguarded everything you, everybody you could think of. I became known as the bodyguard to the stars. And I was in magazines and newspapers and uh, 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 TV shows. and So I had a pretty uh, lucrative business going on. So what, do you, what do you think was your, the most memorable moment being a bodyguard? You know what? Every client and everybody was just different. Everybody had their own character. Everybody had their own personality. And I just uh, enjoyed working for everybody. And the thing about me, they know that no matter what happens, it stays there between me and them. And they know it doesn't go any farther. Because you got to realize, I've worked for people who were married, whether it was a, a male or female. And uh, the bodyguards, the closest thing to them. So you see a lot of things that you keep in your head and you don't, you don't repeat it. So they knew that they could always count on me and not worry about me writing a tell-all book or going on uh, you know, a current affair or TMZ or things like that. So they know they never had to worry about that. So that's why they kept calling me back. And still this day, I still do bodyguard work if they call me. If Sean Penn calls me, I go. If Charlie Sheen, I go. Pamela Anderson, I go. So uh, they know that the lips are sealed. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's so many people that would to love to do. I mean, even part of what you've done, you know, so especially when you get into the movie industry. And what what would you say to people as far as you know wanting to break into something like that? You know what? Uh, don't. It's the hardest thing to get into, and basically, even the stunt business is clicks. Like there's a handful of stunt guys that always call each other. Like if. Uh, uh, if I was doing a show, I would call you. If you were doing a show, you would call me. So it's very hard to get into and break into that industry. Uh, the same with the acting. I mean, you just gotta you know, follow your dream, don't give up, and uh, keep pursuing it. Uh, you know, somebody out there's gonna like the way you look or, or like the way you act. Uh, 
and just keep it up. That's all I can say. I mean, it's just a hard business to get into, and Hollywood's the biggest bullshitters in town, so you got to keep up with that. And they know that, uh, you know, I never kissed anybody's ass in Hollywood. So uh, it's a little harder for me to work because I don't take any bullshit from anybody. And uh, there's been a few stories going around Hollywood. A lot of people are scared to hire me. <laughs> so uh, there's a few stories going around. But uh, you know what? If, you, if you, that's what you want to do, you pursue your dream and you keep going and uh, keep pushing and striving for that. And it'll come. We've seen you uh, on Howard Stern. I mean, he... He is, I mean, talk about controversy and, and wild and crazy and, and uh, what are some of the things you like about uh, doing that show? You know, one thing I like about Howard, he's a, he's a self-made, uh, 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 he became somebody that struggled and uh, uh, through the years he became the king of all media. I mean, he's the biggest thing in, 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 the, uh, in, in radio. He became the biggest host there is. Uh, now he's on this, uh, you know, America's Got Talent. He's doing so many things. But uh, the great thing about Howard, he loves me and I love Howard. I mean, uh, every time I go on there, which I've done a show probably 40 times already through the years, and he just sits there and he says, you know, I just want to be Chug Zito for the day. I just want to be you, man, you know, because you've done it all. You've been there. You've done that. And uh, we got along so well, he gave me my own radio show. So I have my own radio show called Chuck Zito's View, and I just talk about everything. In fact, I'm going to have Monday night is my radio show, and we'll be talking about this interview. We'll be talking about Sonny's movie, his, his ranch, and uh, they say 20 million people listen to Howard, 10 million people listen to me, so that's, that's a good uh, percentage, I think. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, uh, we just talk about, yeah, it's just me. I'd be me. I talk about girls, I talk about fights, I talk about me going to dinner, and I'll be talking about sitting in outside in uh, Sunny's Ranch and looking at beautiful uh, mountains. So uh, it's great, and uh, like I said, I love Howard, and Howard loves me, and he's saying I have the best uh, show on radio, and uh, he just says, I want to be Chuck Zito for the day, that's it. <laughs> So, you, you, uh, what, what exciting things do you have coming up? Well, I just finished two big movies. Uh, one is called uh, Homefront that Sylvester Stallone wrote and produced. And believe it or not, I play the, uh, the president of a bike club. Go figure, right? <laughs> so, uh, uh, I play the president of the Outcast Motorcycle Club, and uh, Jason Statham is the star, and James Franco, Winona Ryder, and Keith Bosworth. And uh, Jason Statham is one of my club members. And then I have my son, and basically the movie opens up with me and Jason the first 10 minutes. It's going to be a great movie. It comes out in, uh, I believe, September of this, uh, this uh, year. And I did another movie called Reach Me that Sylvester Stallone is in, uh, Danny Aiello, Thomas Jane, uh, Tom Sizemore, Danny Trejo. Me and Danny are bank robbers. We uh, rob a bank. So uh, that's going to be all good. So I have two big movies coming out this summer. So you're not just behind the scenes anymore? No, no. Now I'm uh, in front of the camera more, and which I like. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of taking all the bumps and bruises for all these actors, now I'm acting myself. So, And I said to myself, I said, you know what? These guys are acting like I do every day. And they're acting trying to be me. So why not give it a try? And boom. You get an opportunity to I do did your it. own stunts, or uh, and that's another thing. Uh, you know, I'm a, an actor who does my own stunts, so I don't need to hire a stunt man. I do my own stuff, uh, which is great. So everything works out. What about the the fight world? Still pretty active. In uh, yes, I'm. Uh, uh, of course, uh, you know, I'm a big boxing fanatic. Uh, I know the history of boxing since the late 1800s. All the fighters. And uh, me growing up into the sport, I never knew any other sport except for boxing and the martial arts. So I became a martial artist when I saw Bruce Lee in the Green Hornet. And uh, I wanted to be just like Bruce. So I went down to uh, Aaron Banks uh, Karate Academy and uh, I started taking uh, White Crane and Tiger Claw Kung Fu. And from there I went to... Uh, uh, Tommy Mace Karate Academy in New Rochelle and uh, started studying uh, Ishiro 
Heishiro Karate, and then Chikiri Jiu Jitsu, Kumiti Ru Jiu Jitsu, VRNS Jiu Jitsu, and now I train with Professor Henzo Gracie in Gracie Jiu Jitsu in New York City. So I'm still active, I still fight, I still, just to keep in uh, shape and. Yeah, you're pretty timeless. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? I think uh, the thing is with me, a lot of people know that I never, I never drank in my life. I never took a drug. I never uh, 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 smoked a cigarette. So I think that preserved me a little. Where uh, even at my age, I still look pretty, uh, pretty good, I guess. And I feel good. I feel real good. So we're still doing it. We've been there, done that. And of course, in 2002, I wrote my autobiography, Street Justice. And now I'm in the middle of my second book, which should be done, I'm hoping, by the, uh, the end of the summer also. What's the second book? The second book is going to be where the first one picks up. People it leaves off. Um, it's going to be, uh, uh, of course, it started off in my life, uh, you know, since I was a kid. And then it ended with me walking my daughter down the aisle in 1998. So it picks up from 98 till shit, 2013. And a lot's happened from 98 till 2013. So we're going to call it a, 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 a Angel and the Bad Girl. And the great part about it, I'm driving, riding, a, 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 not Angelina, but I'm, I'm riding a, a Pamela Anderson on the back of the motorcycle. And that's the cover shot. Oh, wow. So when you think about it, you look, it says Angel and a Bad Girl, and you think uh, she's yeah. the bad girl, but when you start reading, you, you find out it's somebody else. <laughs> we won't give away those secrets yet. With, with such an exciting life, how, do you, how would you narrow down one particular event or story or, or time that just really sticks out, that just, you know, really touches you? <clears throat> Well, I said it before, I mentioned it before, uh, uh, one particular time that stuck out in my mind and it, uh, and it was a great, great time for me is when I followed Sonny Barger into Sturgis, South Dakota, riding behind Sonny and 200, 250 Hells Angels. It was, that was a, a pretty uh, uh, memorable uh, day in my life. So I always remember that. And like I said, it was deja vu all over again and watching uh, like I was sitting there watching the movie and riding in that same pack that Sonny was leading. Yeah, that, that's so I remember that. That was a memorable day. And uh, you know what? We're still going. We're still going strong. I've been there. I've done that. And we're still going, man. So I'm sure there's more memorable days to come. Absolutely. But, but, I mean, but that says so much when, when you've lived such a full life and you've done so many things in that one particular moment tied in with Sonny Barger. I mean, that's just you yeah, know, true living legend. I got to realize, like I said, it says Sonny is the one who inspired me to become a Hell's Angel. And uh, I had, I was uh, lucky enough in my life that I was, I had 25 years in the club. Uh, even though I, I quit the club, I mean, I'm still friends with a lot of people and still being, being with the legend himself and riding last night to his premiere was awesome, man. Yeah. What what's uh what's in the future for Chuck Zito? Oh, what's in the future? Well if I had a crystal ball I could tell you, but <laughs> you know what, just keep keep on doing what I'm doing and uh I'm blessed with so many so many friends and my family's always been behind me and um, I'm I'm blessed with that. And to have great friends like Sonny. I mean uh uh and still a lot of people in the club. I mean, uh, it's like I never left. Even though I, I quit the club nine years ago, it's like I never left. But uh, uh, we just keep pushing, man. You know, every day is a gift. You know, I have a, I have a sign on my, my, my bedroom door that says, every day is a gift. And what I don't do is take anything for granted anymore, especially when I went to prison. You know, when they locked those doors behind me uh, and they took my freedom away, it was... Uh, you know, something, man. And I don't wish prison on anybody. But uh, it gives you a reality check, man, you know? Do you remember what it was like when you first stepped out? Yes. Uh, you got to realize that I was uh, extradited from Tokyo, Japan. I spent four months in a Japanese prison. And uh, But the day I got out, you know what? My mom, my sisters, and my wife and my daughter were there waiting for me. And that was a big, big... Uh, 
big thing, man. And I always remember that. So, like I said, the family sticks behind you through thick and thin, you know. But uh, still going strong. You know, every day is a gift, and uh, you know, we start start up with waking up in the morning, and uh, you wake up in the morning, it's a good start, man. <laughs> so, uh, just looking forward to every other day, man, and uh, you never know what uh, is in the future. Maybe another movie, maybe another uh, a bike show, who knows? The, the million dollar question I ask everybody uh, if you could go back in time and change one particular thing, what would you change? One particular thing, well, uh, like I said, we had a crystal ball, we could change a lot of things, but uh, I would probably uh, not be around that day when I got arrested. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and waste six years of my life in prison. So, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, if we could do that, you know, uh, uh, we change a few things. But you know what? I, I, I do it all over again, man. I just wish, uh, 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 you know, after 30 years of marriage, uh, I'm not married anymore. And uh, a lot of things happen in my personal life, of course. I would probably change that. Maybe uh, be be a, 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 a better husband, a father, like I should have been, in, instead of always uh, you know being on the road, you know, between the movies and everything else, and of course, you know, riding and the events we had. So uh, maybe I change a few things there. Every rose has its thorn. Every and that's, rose has its thorn. So <laughs> you know what? You live life and. Uh, 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 that's how you live, man. You go by and uh, see all the obstacles you go through, through life and everything else. So, uh, so far I've had a great life and, uh, and I'm keep plugging away, man. I've done so many things. I've probably done uh, 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 what another guy would take five lifetimes to accomplish. I've done so far and I'm still going. And there's no stopping me now. I'm just going to keep, keep going, man. Yeah, you know, there's still a lot of fight in me. That, that's, when that's I get amazing. knocked down, I get back up and just go on to fight another day, man. Yeah. Well, and you may get that, that opportunity again with the, the husband thing, because I noticed last night during the movie there was a lot of the women that, uh, of, of all ages, that were uh, eyeing you up and down. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure, I'm sure it was mutual too, man, you know, because my eyes roam, man. <laughs> so, but I've uh, been. Uh, been lucky, like I said, I've been lucky, and uh, I'm, I'm just uh, so fortunate to have so many uh, dear friends in my life, and a great family, and so many fans who 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 who, uh, who love and, uh, and uh, respect me, and that's a, a a good feeling. It's a great feeling when you walk into an arena for a boxing event or or, or the UFC, or and people go crazy over you, and uh, that's a good feeling, man. You know, speaking of uh, respect in, in, in like leadership and things like that, sum, sum up Sonny Berger for me. Uh, a living legend that uh, everybody uh, one time or another should meet. And uh, he's a guy back in the day saw the vision and saw how big the club could be. And he's probably solely responsible for the, for the club being as big as it is today. And, uh, and it gets bigger and bigger. But... Uh, and Sonny reaches every, every walk of life. Doesn't matter if you're a biker or, or, or a lawyer or a, a doctor. I mean, everybody looks up and respects Sonny. And uh, I'm just hoping to get the same you know, respect someday than, than, than he gets. And uh, to me, just being around him is, is, is a great thing for me, man. He's a legend of me, always was, always will be. And I have a lot to, to uh, thank Sonny for, so. If you could give your fans a a message, what would that be? First of all, I have to thank them for uh, being fans of mine, and a lot of people look up to me and uh, respect what I've, I've done in, in life so far. And uh, and um, I just want to let them know that the feeling is, you know, mutual. And I love and respect them for for loving me. So. Uh, like I said before, you know what, if you, if you have a dream in your life, just keep on pursuing it because it'll come true someday and uh, don't give up, you know, fight and don't give up. What's the best way for your fans to, uh, to show their love for you? Believe it or not, 
and Howard Stern is the one who got me involved in his Twitter and the Facebook stuff where I never ever thought I would be doing. But I started doing that recently. And, 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 and the response that I get from people, and especially writing them back, and they love it. And uh, a lot of them said, oh, this isn't the real Chuck Zito and everything else. You know, you don't know how to prove it. But uh, Howard Stern got me involved in that. And I tweet people and I uh, Facebook them, and it's pretty wild. So they could tweet me and Facebook me on Chuck Zito, of course. And of course, go on my website. You know, ChuckZito.com and uh, see a lot of things and a lot of pictures of me and uh, friends of mine. So, but I want to, you know, show the love and the, uh, the support they've given me and just let them know that I love and appreciate them for it. So, and we're going to keep going. We keep pushing, man, every day. That's, that's incredible. I, I, uh, I want to thank you for this, this time and, and, and giving us an opportunity to, to share part of your life because, it, like, like you said, I mean, you've, you've been there and done that. and there's not I've been there and done that, man, <laughs> a few times. Yeah, and, and the people that you work with are the A-list of the industry, too. Uh, I, I, I work for the biggest people you can think of, man, from, you know, from you know, Joe Pesci to Pacino, De Niro. I mean, everybody you can think of. It's probably who haven't I worked for. You could probably... Name those, you know, few where, uh, like I said, I, I'm just fortunate enough to to have done all these things in my life. And again, I have to thank the Hells Angels for doing that because they're the ones who opened the doors in Hollywood for me. Because if I wasn't a Hells Angel, I would still be from some kid from uh, New Rochelle, New York, man, you know. So, uh, and Sandy Alexander, because like I said, back in the day, he was... The man, you know, just like Sonny was, and uh, uh, he died, uh, you know, some years back. But uh, he was a uh, good Hell's Angel on his day. Well, your your next event you're going to is a wrestling event. I understand. Oh yeah, yeah. After uh, after this uh, event today, I have a flight. I have the red eye going back after Sonny's event, and uh, I fly back home, which is New York, of course, and. Uh, Tomorrow is uh, is WrestleMania, and I was at number one, WrestleMania one, wow. where it was Muhammad Ali was a referee, Billy Martin was a timekeeper, Liberace, uh, uh, Mr. T, Hulk Hogan, it was great, and uh, I'm going to another WrestleMania event tomorrow, and if people remember the old, uh, old wrestler Bruno San Martino, they inducted him to the uh, Hall of Fame. And Arnold Schwarzenegger is giving him the event, so it's going to be a big, big thing. And The Rock is back, Dwayne Johnson, and he's fighting John Cena. And, uh, uh, of course, Brock Lesnar is back from the UFC, and he's fighting uh, Triple H. It's going to be a memorable, uh, memorable uh, time tomorrow, and I'm going to be a part of it. Hey, the Rock and Cena, any predictions? Well, both, they're both my friends, you know, and uh, it depends because it depends who uh, Vince McMahon wants to win. <laughs> so I, I think you'd have to ask Vince McMahon that, that, that prediction. But they're both great friends of mine. I know they're going to be, uh, give a kick-ass show tomorrow, and I'm going to be part of it. All and right. I'll be part of that wrestling crowd, and uh, I know they're going to uh, give me a big response when I walk, walk out there, and uh, it's going to be a good feeling tomorrow. Okay. And be part of it. Something for the ladies out there, blondes, brunettes, redheads. Hey, man, you know what? Uh, it doesn't matter what, you're, what, you're, what color of hair you have. Uh, me, I'm not too particular. you got to be beautiful, tall, sexy, beautiful body. Besides that, no, just trying to keep meeting them and keeping them happy. Yeah, okay, you heard it, <laughs> ladies. He's single. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm single. It's people think that I'm this like ladies man and this and that. And, but you know what? In my life, I can remember on one hand how many girls I've been with. Wow. And people don't believe that. But I swear to God, I count on one hand how many girls I've been with this week. <laughs> Okay, you, you had to with go that, in there. I'm gonna leave you. <laughs> <laughs> After seeing the way the women were looking at you last night, when you, I was thinking, wow, this is this is this guy's the strongest man in the world. <laughs> <laughs> we try, we try, we try and please everybody. Okay, hey, my name is Chuck Zito, and you're watching Rock This Magazine. Keep watching, or else.